Good. So, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for introducing me, and I'd like to give a short introduction to our project. Uh, renewable energy is not new for Germany and not new for many countries in the world. What is a little bit new for us in Germany is to care about the off-grid application and to deal more with the rural electrification, which is more off-grid than grid-connected. And um, therefore, I'd like to, uh, quickly to introduce you uh, to our pilot module, which is part of the Gelaro project. And here you can see the output, but before I show you some applications here, we go quickly into the presentation. So again, uh, what does it mean, rural electrification? Um, what is it about education? And uh, what about international context of our students? Um, Besides of all those idealistic arguments, we also have market arguments about off-grid application. And then uh, I'd like to introduce this training stand. And after this, uh, Franziska Buch will show us uh, the application and the project which was done in Bolivia. Good. So um, electrification in rural areas. You have to keep in mind that worldwide, 1.4 billion people don't have access to the electric grid. And in Bolivia, it is hard to find out the exact figure. Please correct me, Bolivian colleagues. Uh, I found that roughly 50% in rural areas uh, don't have any access to the electricity grid. So they use uh, candles or uh, kerosene lamps or batteries a lot. And they sometimes have to travel long ways to charge their cell phone and uh, to get some comfort which they need for life. So therefore, many, many so-called solar home systems, SHS, um, has been installed because they can provide a basic standard of living. They can um, make people taking part in political life by having a radio or having a television sometimes. Uh, at least they can charge their cell phone and they have light uh, to read at night. And it's good also for students and pupils because they can do their homework um, later on uh, when it's dark. Um, if we look to these projects, and they have done worldwide in many, many countries in Africa, in uh, Asia, and uh, Latin America, many projects uh, have been financed by the World Bank, by the European Union, by a lot of NGOs. Um, some experience is once they have installed, after some years, many projects suffer from bad performance. And what we see uh, worldwide is mostly uh, it is about um, a lack of knowledge in operation and maintenance, usually. Therefore, um, it's quite reasonable to have more training and more education for engineers and technicians, of course, uh, so they can train, again, people living with the solar home systems or with renewable energies uh, in the rural um, areas. Therefore, um, uh, it's uh, time to talk about education. And uh, we started already some study programs in Hamburg. Of course, if we talk about electrification, renewable energies, it's all about mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and environmental engineering. Therefore, there's a long tradition of bachelor programs. But in the past years, um, we have um, an increase of um, request about renewable topics inside of these bachelor programs. And we can currently see it from our environmental engineering bachelor here in Bergedorf. More and more students uh, choose the option to um, go deeper into the renewables. And um, that is a quite good development because we need these engineers as well for the um, worldwide transfer of knowledge and, of course, to do the transmission of the energy supply in Germany and Europe as well. Uh, quite recently, uh, we started an international master program in renewable energy systems. It's very interesting. It's in English. And um, we started just uh, two years ago. And we are quite happy that we could increase uh, the number of applicants year by year. So I started a little statistics. So um, in the last uh, um, round, which started this winter semester, 
we had a request of 160 students for 25 seats. This shows there's really a demand for education, engineering, in engineering, more training, and um, um, we are proud that we can offer such a nice program. Second, of course, it's also about developing similar programs in countries abroad, in countries of Latin America, and we are in discussion, and I know that there are al already plans ready to start with uh, um, power engineering um, in Bolivia as well. So we are seeking, or we are happy to see more international co cooperation in the future. Our students um, also like to go international, and it's nice to see uh, that they're uh, flexible to go worldwide. I took some picture of some of my students, so it is from Ramin Mir Montazeri, the first uh, two pictures. He currently is in La Paz, Bolivia, dealing with re um, renewables and um, rural um, electrification. Um, it's also about having um, highly efficient um, stoves, that's the first picture, or to have a stand um, in PV, which is the second picture. Uh, uh, Jonathan Krink, he just uh, come back from um, Bolivia where he's done a field study about the um, reliability of PV off-grid systems. Or here, this is a picture from Leon in Nicaragua where um, um, Sebastian Schröder has done some work on um, PV for uh, water pumping. So our students are quite interested to go abroad and therefore uh, we are happy to be involved in such an international program to um, show some um, opportunities to our students. Many students, um, because they're young, they do it for idealistic reasons. They like to go to NGOs to do um, some engineering aid work. And uh, even in Germany, we have some um, smaller companies which are more oriented in helping in other countries. But beside of all these idealistic arguments, there are also market arguments to care about uh, standalone systems, off-grid market, especially in photovoltaics. You have to uh, remember that beside of the current boom we see for PV, it's really a boom because uh, the total installed capacity in Germany, Germany is 17 gigawatts, which is the value of 17 nuclear power stations already. Of course, PV cannot um, directly um, substitute um, big power stations because it wouldn't work at night, right? But you can feel this is a huge number. But looking back like 10 or 15 years, all the market or the major market has been off-grid. And of course, off-grid market has also developed in the past. And I took some numbers. Um, sorry, maybe they're a little bit small in the last row, but i g like to guide you through that. Um, so we see um, the remote industrial application. That means off-grid for companies. <coughs> what is it? Telecommunication. It is um, cathodic protection. So these um, are applications which are not driven by subsidy programs. They are um, self-contained, you can say. Then we have those remote habitation. This is solar home systems. This is mostly uh, financed by eight programs. And then we have the consumer power. This is uh, how can I power my iPad? So it's more a sophistic sophisticated um, application. If we look to these figures, um, which is um, roughly here, and we have a conservative and a accelerated um, guess about the future. Here we have markets of roughly 500 megawatts, which sounds small compared to the grid market where we have 28,000 megawatts uh, in the next uh, three years. But have in mind, one megawatt grid connected roughly is 3 million euros. One megawatt off-grid roughly is double or triple um, that figure. So this is a billion dollar market. Uh, so it's also good to think about educating engineers to enter this market. Good, now let's go to our system because this is all about education. Uh, the, the idea was how can we bring more off-grid application to our bachelor and master program? 
and maybe have some object which we can use when uh, transferring know-how to those countries. Of course, we know they have very good engineers and doing a lot of PV solar home systems already. Therefore, it's not to bring um, Nobel Prize winning objects to these countries. No, it is about more to have reliable um, system which work very reliable and which can be used in lectures and in the lab. So the idea is how can we demonstrate um, uh, a training stand where you can have all these options which are used usually in solar homes and we must admit this is a very luxury one here. So um, showing you the electric circuit, what is all included of course we have the PV panels to have the source for energy. These are roughly uh, 300 watt peaks. And to, for storage reason, we need a battery, which is shown here. Of course, you need a charge controller to be independent from light, because we do more education in, in the lab and in-house. We have an additional um, energy source, uh, which can be connected to the plug. Then we have all these application energy-saving lamps. We have a radio, a television, a fridge even. Well, the fridge is not for cooling your Coca-Cola. It's more for cooling medicine, which is used in remote regions. If you go to, um, for example, a first aid station. Um, and uh, we have sockets, um, DC and AC. There we can charge your mobiles, your um, all your applications you need. It is all in here. And we are quite proud that with the help of four master students, uh, we could realize this project. So they started really with planning and executing, finally they do all the mounting here. And um, I have some pictures how they did it all the time. So this is quite an international team. Uh, um, the woman, is, uh, the woman um, she's from Venezuela. Uh, the blonde um, man, he's with us. Uh, Mr. Boer, he is uh, from France. The two guys in front, they are from Germany. And this has been, of course, teamwork. And we'd like to thank uh, Mr. Böhmke from our lab, Frank Heise from Central Solar. It's a local company in Hamburg which supported us in some ideas, the Gilara team. And we are grateful for the EU funding. And um, time is short. And I suggest that we just use the break later. And I'd like to demonstrate some application here. And now I'd like to hand over to Franziska Buch. And she will show us um, the demonstrant Center, that's it, um, in Bolivia. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank you.